Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the Easy Like Sunday Morning Podcast. I am your host, Charles Watson, and I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, hope it's going well. Hope everybody is staying hydrated. I know there is a heat wave going on right now across the United States. So everybody be safe, stay inside, stay hydrated. Remember, uh, outside for an hour at a time and then come back in. Well, guys, good morning. Uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling. Like I said, welcome to the Easy Like Sunday Morning Podcast. This week, guys, we are going to continue our video series, um, How to Start a Business from Scratch. So if you tuned in last week, you will know that I announced that we are starting a brand new video series here at Expert Influencer Academy, and that is called How to Start a Business from Scratch. And basically, um, my hope and my goal for this video series is that if you start at the beginning and you follow the series and our content all the way to the end of the series, you will have all of the information that you need in order to start your business, start your business and get going. Today's topic, guys, is is um, how to structure my business. So last week we covered um, what kind of business should I start. We were just talking about what kind of ideas should you start. Are you thinking about starting uh, your business as a side hustle? or if you are thinking of starting your business going full-time. That's what we covered last week. This week, we're going to cover how to structure my business. You know, your business structure, the type of business that you choose to create, really affects and determines how much you pay in taxes. It determines your ability to raise money, and it determines the amount and type of paperwork that you need to file. Uh, and your personal liability, the risk that you're going to take as an individual in your new company. As a startup or a solopreneur, you're going to need to choose a business structure before you do things like register your new business with the state, uh, before you file for a federal tax ID number, and before you apply for the appropriate licenses and permits, you're going to have to pick a structure. And while you may be able to convert into a different business structure in the future, uh, you may encounter some obstacles in doing so, such as uh, restrictions based on your location. Sometimes you have to pay tax penalties. And uh, sometimes uh, if you choose the wrong business structure and you want, like, let's say, a partnership into an LLC, sometimes they make you dissolve your own business and start another one. Um, so taking the time to determine what type of business structure you want is super important for your future success. So what type of business structures are there and what benefits do they have? I've got five types of structures I want to share with you guys to just think about when you're starting your business, because the ultimate goal is, is to take your idea is to take your uh, passion and your desire, your knowledge in a particular subject and turn that into a business facing uh, online and digital business that you can monetize and help, you know, pay some bills, maybe turn it into a full time career. That is the ultimate goal. So let's talk about some ways that you can uh, set that up. The first type of business I want to talk to you guys about is a sole proprietorship. Now, a sole proprietorship is really easy uh, to run and it gives you full control of your business. You own and run that business as one person. And in this type of business structure, you may use a business name other than your legal name. So you can start a business um, under a name like we did with Expert Influencer Academy. In many states, you'll need to register and file a what's called a DBA or a doing business as uh, form so that you can collect payments under the business name. And here's some things to keep in mind, guys, when you're starting out on a sole proprietorship is uh, 
in a sole proprietorship, there's no legal distinction between you and your business. You are legally and personally accountable for all debts, loans, uh, risks, liabilities, and losses for the business. You receive all monies and profits generated, and you're responsible to pay those taxes at the end of the year. You're responsible for those taxes at the end of the year. And also keep in mind that it can be hard to raise money because you can't sell stocks. You can't have shareholders. You can't sell stocks. And uh, sometimes, sometimes banks won't finance a solopreneur because the risk is too great. So just keep that in mind. But guys, a sole proprietorship uh, can be a good choice for a low risk business and for those who just kind of want to test their business idea before forming a more formal business. So, um, you know, to test out as a solopreneur just to get started to kind of see if you want to start a business, a sole proprietorship is a good way to start. I'm trying to look at your comments here, guys. Um, for some reason, I see that there are comments. I can't find the comment, so I apologize for that. Um, so let's move on to the second type. I will go back after the video, uh, after the podcast, and I will read those comments and I will answer them. So I apologize for the, uh, for the delay in responding to any comments or questions. The second type of structure I have for you guys is a partnership. Now, partnerships are the simplest structure um, if you have a business that involves two or more people. Um, they can own the business together. The structure works and operates much like a sole proprietorship, except that there's multiple owners. And usually this means that all owners are jointly and individually responsible for any neglect or misconduct that's performed by the company. Guys, this even includes misconduct if it's conducted by another partner or owner without you knowing about it. So if you have a partner and they're a little shady and they start doing some shady stuff and uh, have questionable habits, you are going to be personally and professionally responsible for that. So keep that in mind as a partnership. It works like a sole proprietorship, except there's more than one of you. Partnerships can be a good choice for a business with multiple owners, uh, usually professional groups like a group of attorneys, a group of uh, dentists, group of doctors. Uh, they usually go for partnerships and groups who want to test their business ideas before forming a more formal business. Partnerships are good for those people. The third type of company or structure I have is called an LLC. This stands for a limited liability company. And an LLC, guys, allows you to take advantage of the benefits of both a corporation and a partnership uh, business structure. LLCs protect you from personal liability in most instance, instances. And uh, your personal assets like your vehicle, your house, and your savings account won't be at risk if your LLC faces bankruptcy or lawsuits. So this is a, a really good structure. This is the first type of structure that protects you uh, lawfully under law where they can't, you know, take your personal assets. So, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, if you have a vision, if you already have some clients, if you already have some success, you might want to consider starting an LLC. An LLC can be a good choice for a medium or high risk uh, business. Owners with significant personal assets that they want to protect and owners who want to pay a lower tax rate uh, than a corporation would, an LLC is good for you guys. The fourth structure I have guys is called a limited liability partnership, an LLP. And an LLP, partners manage their own business directly un, uh, under like an umbrella structure. Consulting and professional services with equally vested partners often operate as an LLP. And unlike traditional partnerships, uh, in an LLP, partners are not responsible for each other's misconduct or negligence. So, um, I put the examples here. Uh, an LLP can be a good choice if partners uh, involved possess different skill sets that make up the company. For example, like what we do here, like uh, me and my digital marketing experience, I can team up with 
Uh, Tia, who's a professional graphic designer. These are two separate skill sets, but we came together and formed an LLP. But also, she can run and operate her, her graphic design wing, and I can run and operate my digital and online marketing wing. And whatever she does, she's responsible for. Whatever I do, I'm responsible for. But then we get together and we share the profits and the bills and the liabilities and stuff. So a limited liability partnership, if you have multiple people and you have multiple angles in your business, if you sell physical products, if you sell digital products, uh, maybe you're a realtor, but you want to bring somebody else on, an LLP is a great structure to consider. And guys, the fifth type of structure I have is an S corporation. In an S corp, uh, the business's income or losses are usually divided among and passed down to shareholders. S corps can issue stocks. S corps can raise money. S corps can have, you know, uh, funders, uh, money men that but you're responsible for that okay and it comes down your profit and loss margin comes down to the shareholders the shareholders report income or loss on their personal tax returns s corps cannot have more than a hundred shareholders and all shareholders must be uh u.s citizens now someone on twitter did read uh my blog post and reached out to me and said that they can also be u.s residents I don't know that 100%. I'm just passing that information along to you in all my research and everything that I did into prepare for this video and prepare for my blog post uh, clearly stated that they had to be U.S. citizens. But, you know, rules change all the time. And that is a great reminder. I am not a lawyer. I am. <laughs> this is not financial advice. Please do your research. If uh, at the ultimately, uh, you should consult a, uh, a professional and their opinion before deciding what kind of uh, company that you, you want to set up. So here we go. S corps can be a good choice for a business that would otherwise be a C corp, but meet the criteria to file as an S corp. And guys, organizational structure is a great way to effectively manage business functions and employees. And so while the type of organizational structure usually depends on the size and the operations of your new business, Having a structure in place will provide universal benefits as you get your business off the ground. So guys, there you have it. Five ways you can structure your business. Uh, second video in the series, how to start a business from scratch. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to catch the other video or you want to catch the beginning of the series, you could head to our website, expertinfluenceracademy.com. I have a link to it in the show notes down here. Um, when this video hits YouTube, I can link up a card to the first video in the series here. But this, again, is our how to start a business from scratch video. So in the first video, we talked about what kind of business should you start? And now we've covered how you can structure your business. Super excited about this series, guys. Like I said, the goal is to start with an idea or a want, and the end result is to have a fully functional business that you know how to run, you know how to license, you know how to monetize, you know how to market, and uh, to get you excited and get you going. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with someone that you think uh, could benefit from the information. Maybe you yourself are trying to start a business. That's why you're here. Maybe you know somebody that's starting a business. Uh, if you do share this along, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend, and we will see you next week.